Hello, hello, and welcome YouTube. Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video on MathBase, of course. And as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today, as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Step on inside. We are going to explore 9.2 in the Big Ideas Math Integrated Math 2 textbook for special right triangles. Uh, we came off of 9.1 using the Pythagorean theorem, and now we are going to look at very specific 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. Those are the degree measures in those triangles. And these are used, I won't say these are used everywhere, but you take integrated math three, you take pre-calculus, you take calculus, these kinds of triangles will pop up quite often, and uh, they're special ratio relationships th that they do have. We're going to start with the lecture portion, as always. If you want to check the description section down below, you can download this PDF or just follow along with the things that I say here, and then we will do the actual problem set. A shorter problem set, somewhere in the 20s, I believe, but I don't know how long the problems actually are. Now, uh, I'm going to apologize beforehand, uh, at least from what I hear from my own voice. I might sound a little ill. It's my allergies that have kicked in as the wind here has picked up. But hopefully the information is still good. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at that actual lecture portion right now, 9.2, where we are going to find the side lengths in special right triangles and solve real life problems involving special right triangles, to which I have no idea what they want us to do. Previously, you want to know about an isosceles triangle, and I know why. It actually starts with the 45, 45, 90 here. Uh, okay, finding side lengths in special right triangles. Here's a specific type. A 45, 45, 90 triangle is an isosceles right triangle that can be formed by cutting a square in half diagonally. True. You take a square, which has all equal sides and right angles all around, you cut it in half, those 90s get bisected, because the square's diagonals bisect their angles, to 45s, and then boom, you have this. Um, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is root 2 times long as each leg. You see, if your leg length was x, then the other leg would also be x, and the hypotenuse would be the square root of 2 times larger. Pretty simple Pythagorean theorem setup, x squared plus x squared equals c squared. Yeah, anyway, you solve it, you get x times the square root of 2. Now, already, I want to go ahead and say, by my own nature of how I normally say these things, I would generally do this. I, I'm not saying the book is wrong at all. In fact, they are more right than I am. But I would generally say 1 to 1 to root 2, as if if the lengths were 1, then I say root 2 right there. And so if you hear me say 1 to 1 to root 2 as the ratio relationship, because that is how I'm going to say it. That's how I'm very habitual in saying it. Just make sure you know that. Instead of me saying x to x to x root 2, I'll say 1 to 1 to root 2. And there are ways that you'll kind of just remember that more, like 1 plus 1 is 2, you know, like little things like that. And yes, 1, plus, one squared plus 1 squared is root 2 squared, if that kind of backs it up. So that's a 45, 45, 90 degree triangles setup. Okay, now let's see what they say here. An expression involving a radical with index 2 is in simplest form when no radicands have perfect squares as factors other than 1. No, I, I don't know what they're saying. Um, let's not worry about that. Okay. Um, finding side lengths at a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the, the, the basic premise that I want to go with, actually, before I go to those, is remember, this is root 2 times larger over here. Whatever this is, you got to multiply by the square root of 2 to get that. Same with this side. And whatever these things are, they are equal to each other. If I wanted to go from the hypotenuse to a leg, I would divide by the square root of 2. I, oh, they're saying that right here. Hypotenuse is leg times square root of 2. So I'll set things up like that. Maybe I'll have this drawn out every so often, but that's what I'm looking to do. Multiply by the square root of 2, divide by the square root of 2, or in these cases of legs, keep them equal. Find the value of x, write your answer in simplest form. In this first one, we have the right triangle with the right angle up here. That makes x our hypotenuse. 8 is one of the legs, so we multiply this by the square root of 2, and we will get x's value as 8 times the square root of 2. That's what they're doing here. Take the leg times root 2, and that's what leg length. On this next one, the hypotenuse here is 5 root 2, which is very nice of them. So we can divide by the square root of 2, and 5 root 2 over root 2 is just 5, and that is the length of this one right here. Now, will we be so fortunate to get root 2s with these all the time? <laughs> yeah, no, I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, I haven't looked at the problem set yet, but uh, I have other worksheets. I have other, <coughs> I don't know if they're videos, but other worksheets of these sorts that uh, I would definitely look to do different things with it. Okay, that's the 45, 45, 90 triangle. There's another one called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. In a 30, let me, let me clear my throat first. Give me one second. Okay. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg. And the longer leg is root three times as long. Root three times as long as the shorter leg. 
The shortest leg, x, would be opposite the 30 degree angle, the smallest angle. And we've done that before. Opposite the smallest angle is the shortest leg, up the side, opposite the largest angle is the longest side. So it makes sense that if we give this one x, see, we don't want to give anything fractions if we don't have to. Uh, if we call the shortest one x and we only need to multiply to go outward, the hypotenuse is twice as long, opposite the 90 degree angle. So times 2 to go from here. The other leg opposite the 60 is root 3 times as long. The 30, 60, 90 triangle, if I were to generally draw it, I would just generally say this. Here's the 30, here's the 60, things like that. I would generally say 1 to 2 to root 3. 1 to 2 to root 3 for the 30, 60, 90. Now, <clears throat> the tricky part about this when I say 1 to 2 to root 3 is the 2 has to do with the 90 degree angle, the largest angle, not the root 3. Counting this upward sounds better than 1 to root 3 to 2. So it's just it flows off the tongue better, 1 to 2 to root 3. How can you remember that root 3 is smaller than 2 without knowing the square root of 3? Because I know that 2 is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is more than the square root of 3. So if there's something you need to remember, it is with that. You get angles opposite the shortest side be the smallest angle, and angles opposite the longest side be the largest angle, things like that. So the 1 to 2 to root 3 ratio relationship appears there. You notice that the fastest way to go from this hypotenuse to this leg is go to this side first, divide it by 2, and then multiply by root 3, things like that. I'm taking a long time talking about these things, but you're going to have to remember them. You're going to have to know them. Before I keep moving on, because they're not going to tell you, these are the only two special right triangles there are. Now, what makes them special? These ratio relationships are special. The square root of 3 and the square root of 2, they may be irrational numbers, but you can still represent them as square root of 2 or square root of 3. No other angle base has quite the ratio relationship as the 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. And there are ways to prove these ones through Pythagorean theorem that make it so clean. All the other ones are just, you have to use trig to find them. You have to, you know, you have to be told something. They don't have ratio relationships like these. So these are the two special right triangle sets that are great. All right. Let's find side lengths in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Let's say you have the longest leg. Oh, this is a good one. Let's say you have the longest leg, not longest side, longest leg of 9 opposite the 60. First, let's get the one opposite the 30 because this should be root 3 times larger. 9 should be root 3 times larger. So we're going to divide this by root 3. And they're going to show you the same thing as well. We're going to divide it by root 3 like this, but we don't leave an answer irrationalized. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, with a denominator irrationalized. We must irrationalize the denominator. So they're going to multiply top and bottom by root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And 9 over 3 is 3. You're left with 3 root 3 because that root 3 goes on top. So instead of writing it as 9 over root 3, you write it as 3 root 3. That would be the x value. How do you get the y value? You multiply that value by 2. In the 1 to 2 to root 3 relationship, the hypotenuse is twice as long as that short side. And you'll get 6 root 3, which they put right here. All right, some more examples for us to ignore because we're going to go ahead and do some more of those on our own uh, in time. Let's solve real life problems, shall we? Modeling with mathematics. The road sign is shaped like an equilateral triangle. Important for the 30, 60, 90 proof, by the way. Estimate the area of the sign by finding the area of the equilateral triangle. So they're going to show us some stuff. Uh, an equilateral triangle is nice in that when you draw the altitude to generate a height, because this can be like your base, um, it will also bisect your other side. It is a median as well. So uh, it's a perpendicular bisector, I should say. So the 36 splits up into 18 and 18. Why is that important? Because we got to find out what that height is. And in an equilateral triangle with all 60 degree angles, this would have been a good problem to give us instead of having it as an example. With all 60 degree angles, this also gets bisected here as the angle and becomes 30. You have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if I know that 18 is the value of the short side, then opposite the 60 is going to be 18 root 3. You multiply by root 3 over here, and you're going to get you know 18 root 3. That's your height for this thing. So we can find out the area of this triangle by doing 1 half base times height. Well, height's 18 root 3, but times height. So that's what they're going to do. 1 half of 36 times 18 root 3. And because it's a word problem, we like to approximate this answer around it and get something close to what we want. Around 561 square inches for the area of the yield side. I didn't know that, did you? I didn't know. Let's find the height of a ramp. A tipping platform is a ramp used to unload trucks. How high is the end of an 80-foot ramp? 
when the tipping angle is 30 degrees and 45 degrees. So you can change this angle as you need to if it's 30 degrees. We need to find that height when this is an 80 foot ramp. The ramp right here is 80 feet. So if this is 80 feet, this is twice as long as that height, right? This is the height uh, in a 30, 60, 90. This is twice as long as the height. And in a 45, 45, 90, it's the square root of two times longer than that height. So we're gonna divide 80 by two to get 40 feet for the height of the ramp at a 30 degree angle. And a 45, 45, 90 degree angle will divide 80 by root two. And instead of rationalizing it, we can approximate it's around 56.6 feet. I haven't seen these, so uh, ramps, that is. So I actually, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. It's pretty tall, pretty scary. So uh, 56 feet, seven inches. They even get down to the uh, inch amount, interesting. All right, is that it for those? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's get into the problem set now that we've hit some of the lecture portion. So yeah, Pythagorean theorem may not be used in the proof stuff so much. And we've talked about Pythagorean triples, by the way. And now we're talking about special right triangles with angle measures to get ratio relationships for these specific ones. Let's first get into the vocabulary and core concept check questions. And then we're going to do the problem set. Name two special right triangles by their angle measures. Well, there's the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And there's the 30, 60, 90 triangle. which is the one to one to root two relationship and the one to two to root three ratio relationship of the side lengths. Explain why the acute angles in an isosceles right triangle always measure 45 degrees. Well, you could do the square argument that you were breaking a square up into the congruent parts, but let's get more into just the idea. Why acute angles always measure 45 degrees? Because, because, because um, base angles in an isosceles triangle are congruent. And the non-right angles in a right triangle are complementary. A basic way of saying that if two angles add to 90 and they are the same, they must both be 45. 2x equals 90 divided by 2x equals 45. And there it is. All right, guys. I was going to say that ought to do it for this one. That is not even close. That ought to do it for the lecture portion, the vocabulary and core concept check. We are now going to get into the problem sets where we are going to do... I'm not looking at the right screen yet. Up to number 25, 3 to 25. Got to get my binder paper stuff ready. Got to get my pen tool ready. Got a message. I'm going to ignore it. Let's go ahead and get started. In numbers, in exercises 3 through 6, find the value of x. Write your answer in simplest form. As per usual, I'm going to leave the drawing over on that side. However, I will probably mark it up as needed to keep talking about what I mentioned in the lecture portion. In a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the hypotenuse is the square root of two times larger than the sides. Whoops, going the other way. So we are going to take that leg length of seven and multiply it, whoops, multiply it by the square root of two. So what is seven times the square root of two? Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to show any other work that I don't need to outside of the diagram stuff. Number four, we have another 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. How do I know that? Because these are congruent to each other. They're isosceles. And in an isosceles right triangle, that makes these 45. If these are 45 degree e degrees each, once again, we can multiply this by the square root of 2, either of them, and we will get the value of x. So x is 5 root 2 times the square root of 2. Now, I wouldn't be done here. We don't just leave it like that. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. So that's an instance where you don't see root 2 at the end of it with that hypotenuse thing, even though it's the square root of 2 times larger than each leg. 5 and 6 are still 45, 45, 90s, but this time it looks like we'll be dealing with being given the hypotenuse and finding the lengths of one of these legs. We start very basic. We got a 3 root 2. We got to make this root 2 times smaller by dividing by root 2. So yes, I'm kind of showing some work on that side over there. I hope it's okay. So number 5, we are going to have... 3 root 2 over two, uh, root 2, which is just 3. And that's what we're going to... Oops, I should write x equals, which is 3. And both of those x's are the same in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Once again, why do I know it's 45, 45, 90? They are equal in length. And then number 6, once it expresses the 45, we will divide 9 by the square root of 2. I think at this point we can recognize that at least the fourth problem uh, let's start with x equals 
x equals 9 over root 2. Let's rationalize this denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 2. And you're left with 9 root 2 over 2. It's not pretty. It's not pretty, but it is rationalized, and it's good. It'll work out. That is x's answer. That is the like length. Okay, in exercises 7 through 10, find the values of x and y. Write your answers in simplest form. So now we are dealing with 30, 60, 90 degree triangles, where whenever you have the side opposite the shortest, uh, the smallest angle, the hypotenuse will be twice as long, and the long leg opposite the 60 will be root three times as long as that short leg. So let's start with x. x is 9 times the square root of 3, which is 9 root 3. Let's go to y. y is 9 times 2, which is 18. So we got 9 root 3, and we got 18 for number 7. That's the 30, 60, 90 relationship. Number 8. Number 8. We uh, have the long leg because it's opposite the 60. See, this 30 goes here. And x is opposite that, which is the shortest side. you got to take what's here and divide by root 3. Don't do it just because there's a root 3 in the problem. That's just general happenstance. That's there to be a clean problem to start with. And then I can take that short side and multiply it by 2. And then I'll get the hypotenuse here. So one at a time. Save y for last this time especially. x is taking 3 root 3 and dividing by root 3. We get 3. That's x's leg length. Probably best that you change that there as well in case you're wanting to use it, which I do. I want to do 3 times 2 now to get y. 3 times 2 is 6. That's the leg, the length of your hypotenuse. And if you were really stuck on finding that last length and didn't remember what to do, use Pythagorean theorem. We just came off that section. Do 3 squared plus 3 root 3 squared, and you can still get 6 as an answer. That's the point. All right, number 9 and 10. You're given the hypotenuse in these cases, and we got to find x and y. Now, hypotenuse, we find the short leg first, ideally, because this is the 30, because there's the 60, so this one here's the 30, and opposite that, we will be dividing this by 2. This is twice as big, or uh, the hypotenuse is twice as big. So let's start with y. I'm not going to start with x. y is 24 over 2, which is 12. Now, x, I'm not going to write this over there, but you got to multiply 12 by the square root of 3 to get that x value on that last one. And then number 10. Once again, getting y first will make most sense. Huh, okay. So on number 10, y equals 12 root 3. Don't divide by root 3. We divide it by 2. It's twice as big. And we get 6 root 3. Now x takes that 6 root 3, and we got to make it root 3 times larger. We kind of saw this in a problem before with root 2s. That's going to be 6 times 3, which is 18. 18 is the longer leg of the bunch. And 18 is shorter than 12 root 3. So take that in the bank. All right, let's keep going. Those are pretty fast. Number 11 and 12 are error analysis questions. Describe and correct the error in finding like the hypotenuse of the hypotenuse. I like to look at the thing and guess. I don't know what they're going to say. By the triangle angle, uh, by the triangle sum theorem, the measure of the third angle must be 60 degrees. Yes. So the triangle is 36 and 90 degree triangle. Good. Hypotenuse is shorter leg times root 3, which is 7 root 3. They got to double it, right? So the length of the hypotenuse is 7 root 3 units. Um, it's just everything on that bottom part. The top part's good. Um, they are correct. That, whoops. It is a 30, I'm not going to put the degree symbols, 30, 60, 90 triangle, but the um, hypotenuse is twice as big as the short leg, not root 3. Sorry, square root 3, root 3, things like that. Now, you may accidentally do that as well. You, if I say what's bigger, 2 or root 3, I already asked this. If I say what's bigger, 2 or root 3, you might say root 3. Remember, 2 is the square root of 4. 2 is bigger. Hypotenuse has to be the biggest side. So, hypotenuse, let's correct that, is 7. 
7 times 2, which is 14, not 7 root 3, which would be the longer leg. All right, let's go to number 12. By the triangle sum theorem, the measure of the third angle must be 45. Good. 45, 45, 90 triangle. Good. Hypotenuse is leg times leg times the square root of 2. It's just one of the legs times the square root of 2. I've never seen that mistake before in my life. Maybe it's maybe it has to do with that 1 to 1 to root 2 thing that someone might accidentally make that mistake, but never seen it before. They multiplied both legs together to obtain the hypotenuse when in reality they just need to multiply one of the legs of a 45 45 90, of any of these triangles this is all a similarity thing so this is uh, hypotenuse equals root 5 times root 2 it does become root 2 times bigger and that becomes root 10 that's just the way that you would end up putting that answer for that two radicals two square roots they multiply together in exercises 13 and 14 sketch the figure that is described find the indicated length round decimal answers to the nearest tenth oh i hope it's not like a compass thing it's not but the side length of an equilateral triangle is five centimeters find the length of an altitude um Okay, I thought they wanted me to use a ruler, so I'm not going to use a ruler. I'm just going to use my equilateral triangle tool like that. Okay, now there was a question that we had that was pretty similar to this um, from the yield stop sign thing in the examples if you saw it. If you didn't, or even if you did, go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do here. Let's so find the length of an altitude round to the nearest tenth. And if I do anything on a calculator, you're probably not going to see it. I hope that's okay that I just kind of do it off screen. So here's an example of an altitude right here. I did mention that an altitude and an equilateral or isosceles triangle that goes down the, uh, the, the apex, the vertex thing. Um, it is also bisecting this angle and it is bisecting this side. So that five is now broken up into a couple 2.5 centimeter bits right here. And that's going to be important. Now, this is also an equilateral triangle, which means these were all 60s, but this has now become a 30. We're looking, guys, at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, they want us to find this height here. Ignore this other part of the triangle, please. Give me one second. Take a look at the lengths you have on the left. We have a hypotenuse of 5 in the green. We have a hypotenuse of 5. And opposite the 30 is 2.5. This actually lends well to why a 30, 60, 90 triangle has exactly this twice as big as this thing going. You're actually seeing it right now. The height is going to take this and multiply by the square root of 3. So the height equals 2.5 times the square root of 3. Now they do want us to you know, calculate this and round this. Let me pop up the calculator on here. So 2.5 times 3 square root equals 4.33. They want one decimal place? Yeah. So it's about 4.3 centimeters in height. It should be less than 5, but it's not much. It should be less than 5, and it should be more than 2.5. But I think having the full number thing actually really helps with that. All right, let's try number 14. The perimeter of a square is 36 inches. Find the length of a diagonal. So I really like that they introduced, I didn't expect that, but I really like that they introduced a 45, 45, 90 triangle just by talking about a square. I generally don't do that. I just go straight to the isosceles triangle, which is fine. It's either or. We take a square. And again, a square has <coughs> excuse me, congruent side lengths like those or these. All right angles. And we just bisected those angles. That's what happens to squares. So we got a 45, 45, 90. <laughs> Let's do the one up top, for example. What's in green? That's a 45, 45, 90 triangle where those two things are congruent. The perimeter of a square is 36 inches. So if the perimeter is 36, a side, that's an S, is uh, the perimeter, 36 divided by 4, which is 9. Did they say inches? Inches, inches. So each of these are 9. 9. And now we want to find the length of this diagonal. Well, it's going to be 9 times the square root of 2. Diag equals 9. Let's put D. D equals 9 times the square root of 2. It's root 2 times larger. That's in inches. But if I use a calculator, I'm going to say it's around 
seven? Let's see, nine times two square root, 12.727. So 12.7 inches. And yes, it should be more than nine, not much more. See, I didn't mention this and I don't think it needs to be mentioned, especially because I don't know things. Doubling an angle measure in comparison, like th these are 45, right? 90 is twice as big. Just because an angle is twice as big doesn't mean the side opposite is twice as long. That's not the relationship that we have in play. There's more to it than that. Number 15 and 16, find the area of the figure, round decimal answers to the nearest tenth. So here you have a square with a diagonal length of eight feet. You know, I could treat this as a romb... I could treat this as a romb... Um, a rhombus and both diagonals would be equal this is completely unrelated but both diagonals would be equal and you can do one half diagonal one times diagonal two which means the answer would be 32. i just got the answer in a total way that they did not want me to find it that's okay 32 square feet is what we're going to get but let's go ahead and find it in the way that they want us to in that eight foot scenario let's go ahead and find one of the side lengths i'll call them x just by labeling an x right here we can take that eight and divide by the square root of two 8 over root 2. Now, for the sake of practice, I'm going to go ahead and rationalize these denominators. However, because a lot would be used in the calculator, I guess not this time. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. 8 root 2 over 2, which is 4 root 2 feet. So each of the sides are 4 root 2 feet. To find the area of a square, you square each side length. We take 4 root 2 squared. Yeah, I don't need a calculator because we get to square 4 and square the square root of two like so boom boom and four squared is 16 root two squared is two what's 16 times two 32 square feet that is number 15. number 16 is a parallelogram now a parallelogram does base times height just like a rectangle or a square but it does base times height but your height is not four. It's not a slanted height. If this is your base, this is your height perpendicular to it. We need to find that height. Let's call it H. We know that this length here is four. The whole thing is five. I don't think I'm gonna use that five to find this. It's not like it got bisected, but I can use the four in this 30, 60, 90 triangle right here to be able to find it. So let's kind of draw that out because I wanna get specific parts of them I have four meters here, a 60 degree angle here, which means this is 30, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is the hypotenuse, which is twice as long as the short leg, the 30, which would be two meters. That's this little guy right here. And honestly, that part's not really used except to find the height. Like we're not using it for the area, we're using it for the height. This will be two root three, two root three meters. That is your height. That is H. It's not your answer, but we can get our answer from it. Your area of this Parallelogram is base times height. We get to do 5 times 2 root 3. That's 10 root 3 square meters. However, they did ask us to round to the nearest tenth. Uh, this one will need rounding. Uh, it's going to be around 1 point seven, or excuse me, 17 point something. Uh, calculator. 10 times 3 square. 17.3. The other one was exact, remember. Okay, that's number 16. Number 17. Problem solving. Each half of the drawbridge is about 284 feet long. How high does the drawbridge rise when X is 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees? So when that drawbridge raises, it's going to raise certain amounts of degrees, and that height will change here. They're talking about this height right here. How high does the drawbridge rise? So imagine all those different sets for X. Imagine that we have forward find X when X is 30. We'll take a look at it when it's at 45. Imagine this was still 284, it's just scaled differently. 45. And then let's check 60. And again, imagine it's still the same 284 there. 60, height 284. 
they all change the parameters based on what you have and what you're doing with it. In the first scenario, it's always the hypotenuse, but in the first scenario, this thing will be twice as big as that, so we gotta divide by two. So h is 284 over two, which is 109, uh, excuse me, 142. 142 feet. If it's a 45 degree rise, H is 284 divided by the square root of two, right? That's what's happening here. We get to divide this by the square root of two. Now, did they ask for nearest 10th? They didn't, but I think I want to round it. Um, I'll get you the exact answer as well, like rationalized. We multiply top and bottom by the square root of two. We get 284 root two all over two, which is 142 root two feet, which is about 142 times two, the square root of two, 200.8, if I did the nearest 10th again, 200.8 feet. Remember, this is height of the drawbridge. The drawbridge itself, 284 feet. The only time it actually goes to 284 is when it goes vertical to 90 degrees, if it does that. Now, this one is opposite the 60, but this is still the hypotenuse. Remember, we already know what opposite a 30 in this case would be, 142. Now we got to take 142 and multiply by the square root of 3. This divides by 2 to get here, multiplies by root 3 to get there. So h is 142 times the square root of 3 feet. So let's do 142 times square root of 3. 245.95, I get to round that up to 246.0. 246.0 feet. It's crazy thinking how tall that, it's even taller than, I don't know, a lot of like drop zone and things like that. So it's, it's, it's an amusement park, right? Roller coasters and like the Golden Gate Bridge, not the tower part, just the, where the road is. All right, let's keep going. Let's move on to probably another math modeling kind of question. Yeah, modeling mathematics. A nut is shaped like a regular hexagon with side lengths of one centimeter. Find the value of x. Hint, a regular hexagon can be divided into six congruent triangles. Yes, it can. Um, I, I didn't really read the question too much. I just saw the fact and I thought that was interesting. Let's just draw a hexagon and see what they want us to do again. So in this hexagon, we have one centimeter. Oh, they said find the length of x, the value of x. Okay, x is this entire thing right here. And let's see what we're talking about in a regular hexagon. Now, it was IM2, right, where we learned things about interior angles of polygons. We did an IM1 as well, but interior angles of polygons. If we do divide this, yes, a regular hexagon, and they all meet at the center, you have, you have, Six of the finest triangles here. Yeah, I, I think they really would want you to know. It's not just that they're congruent. They're a very specific kind. So I don't know what they actually intend on having you know, but I want to talk about it anyway. So in a hexagon, the interior angle sum is 180 times 6 minus 2, or 180 times 4, or 720. And each interior angle measure is 720 divided by 6, which is 120 degrees. So this whole thing here is 120 degrees. That means an individual one, like this right here, is 60 degrees. And that also means this other one, then therefore must be 60, just the way that it's broken up and the way that it's regular. And we just talked about the 120. That means this must be 60. So it's an equilateral triangle. It's not. They're not just congruent. They're equilateral. It's an equilateral triangle, and they want us to find x, knowing that this guy's 1. If that's one, and we can do what we did before, we can break this thing up by drawing right down the middle here, draw an altitude, because that's how, this is x, right? This is x. We just gotta find out what this length is here in what appears to be, and it is, a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now this one is the whole length of this side right here, but one of those would just be 0.5, right? One half. I, I don't know if I should put one half or 0.5. I'm thinking more in fraction world, but I think, ah, let's put 0.5. I feel like we're gonna have to round that anyway. Find the value of x. Um, no, we won't. Let's put one half. One half is fine. It's actually perfect. One half centimeter. Okay, 
that's opposite the 30, right? Opposite the 60 is what would be root three times larger. So what's one half times the square root of three? It's one half root three. We can also say that as root three over two. Well, x is taking that root three over two and doubling it. The twos cancel. You're left with the square root of three. It's the square root of three centimeters. That is the length of this thing right here, what x is for the entire nut. Okay, that's number 18. Number 19, we get to prove the 45, 45, 90 triangle. I keep saying it can be proved. I think we kind of even already self-proved it before. They do say write a paragraph proof. I'm really not interested. I just want to show you the math. Let's show you the math first and see if a paragraph proof can work off of it. Uh, given you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, prove the hypotenuse is root two times lo uh, as long as each leg. Well, the the concept has already been laid out and in play for us, guys. A 45, 45, 90 triangle is also an isosceles triangle because base angles are congruent. It's the base angles theorem or the converse of the base angles theorem. Either way, these are isosceles, therefore they're the same. Whatever one is, the other is. And although we don't yet know the hypotenuse length, let's say we call it C, by Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, like so. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Let's write it this way. And if we take the square root of both sides, we will get that c is the square root of 2 times the square root of x squared. Or in the square root of x squared is just x. You get x times the square root of 2. It is root 2 times larger than what you had before. So I'm not gonna do a large paragraph proof. I'm just gonna kind of say about the isosceles triangles parts. A 45-45-90 a, uh, a triangle is also an isosceles triangle. Um, and therefore each leg has the same length. I'll just put X in quotation marks. Um, by Pythagorean theorem, which we just did. By Pythagorean theorem, uh, x squared plus x squared equals c squared using algebra. c equals x times the square root of 2. I'll just leave it like that because I have that above x times the square root, trying to get my symbol, square root of 2. My phone keeps vibrating. I think there's a text thread going on. All right, that'll work for me there. That's number 19. Number 20. How do you, ooh, how do you see it? The diagram shows part of the wheel of Th Theodorus. I, I shouldn't be laughing. I thought they were saying, like, wheel of fortune, but with Theodorus. Um, that's probably a real thing. <laughs> Oh, okay, I got it. Which triangles, if any, are 45, 45, 90 degree triangles? Well, the one to one to root two. The the far triangle the triangle on the far left. Okay. They're not really asking for explanations. They're just saying, do you see it for what it is? Part B, which triangles, if any, are the 30, 60, 90 degree triangles? Um, looks like this one right there. The root 3, which appeared to be the hypotenuse of the one before it, and this root 4 is just a 2, right? Oh, this is kind of cool. Uh, this is actually really kind of cool. Um, now, let me get this out of the way. I made mention before, I and it was it. I didn't explore it very much, I made mention before that there aren't any other angle things that are unique with thing like, you know, like this what, one to two to root five. Wouldn't that be something special? Yeah, but the angle measures are now like irrational numbers. They're not integer value whole numbers like these ones are. Anyway, um, uh, the, tr the third triangle, the third triangle, the third triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm not going to say the one with the one to two, root three to two, whatever ratio relationship. That's something that's clearly been discussed the entire time. So this is the 45, 45, 90 
and this is the 30, 60, 90 right there. Remember, root 4 is 2. All right, another proof, probably for the 30, yep, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Write a paragraph proof of the 30, 60, 90, and this is exactly how I would do it as well. You've already kind of seen a lot of the makeup of it. You start with an equilateral triangle, which they have. You Let me copy and paste their thing. You start with an equilateral triangle. You break it up by drawing an altitude that bisects both the side and the angle uh, that it's you know being drawn through. Ignore that where it says angle. And you you know that that side the side on the other end gets broken up. Hold on, I'm trying to clear that out. There we go. Um, that side gets broken up, and it's best that you really call it two x, right? If I called these 2x to begin with, they got bisected in such a way so you get x and x. Well, this is still 2x right here, which is a really nice way of beginning how we talk about all that. This is the hypotenuse, 2x, and x is half the size, opposite the 30. How do I get the 60? Let's call it b. How do I get the 60? Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus b squared equals 2x quantity squared. And remember, you got to square 2x. You don't just square x. Um, and 2x quantity squared becomes 4x squared. And if I subtract x squared from both sides, I get 3x squared. You take the square root of both sides here, you get b is, you know, square root of 3 stays as it is, and the square root of x squared is x. You get x times the square root of 3. So that is showing the ratio relationship of these three sides of this triangle. And it begins by showing that it's equilateral. So again, quick paragraph to write that thing out. Um, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, excuse me, uh, an equilateral, if an equilateral triangle of side length 2f, uh, 2x is perpendicular by bisected, uh, it has, has an altitude drawn, it will bisect the angle and side opposite that angle, making a 30 degree angle and a side length of x opposite that angle. Bad sentence, but that's okay. Um, using Pythagorean theorem above, the altitude will be x root 3 units. Uh, x times the... I lost my symbol thing. Uh, right here. x root 3. Okay. All right. Quick paragraph proof given what I showed above. <laughs> Hopefully it's making some good sense. All right. A few more questions. How far have we gone? Less than... We're going to go less than an hour on a section. Hopefully. Hopefully not a massive proof thing. 22. Thought provoking. The diagram below is called in the Ailes Ailes triangle. Each triangle in the diagram has rational angle measures, and each side length contains at most one square root. Label the sides and angles in the diagram. Describe the angles. All right, let's uh, kind of copy and paste it. All right, um, off the bat, well, you got a couple. You got a couple things you can look at. And I've never seen this thing before, but. Looks pretty straightforward to get the info off of 22. Off the bat, I actually looked at the twos first. Two and two with the 90 degree angle. That makes this part here two root two. That guy right there. Is this a rectangle? Yes. Because it's a rectangle, these are all right angles here. So keep that in mind when we do some of these other parts. Um, all right. That's two root two. Also the hypotenuse of this thing here for later. Here's a 60 degree angle. That, mean, that makes this 30. Remember, these were 45s, by the way. 45, 45. Okay. The, the 2 is now the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And opposite that is, or not opposite, the opposite of the 30 is a 1, half the size of that. So this will be the square root of 3 right here, which means this whole side here is the square root of 3. But it will be broken up into two parts, which we'll take a look at later. Um, this is 60. This is 90. That is 150 degrees. That makes this thing 30, which just means another 60 degree thing here. So opposite this two is once again a one, and that'll make this also a root three. So each of these are like a one, really? Oh, this is one 
my this is root 3 minus 1 over here then okay just because of how these things go and then this whole thing must be 1 plus the square root of 3 in that way root 3 plus 1 I don't know I, I kind of want to put the radical last let's put negative 1 plus root 3 that way well let's do it the other way let's turn this into root 3 plus 1 I really want them to both be the same way probably could have been a couple ways we could have come up with that we also could have used Pythagorean theorem but maybe it wouldn't have simplified that way see I want to see if uh, that would take too long but root 3 plus 1 squared plus root 3 minus 1 squared equals 2 root 2 I guess it should and I think we filled it all out 2 2 root 2 looks good label them in the diagram describe describe the triangles well I didn't mention what these ones were this is a weird special ratio relationship it's not as clean it doesn't mean it doesn't have things I probably spoke too soon in saying that it didn't but 60 45 this will be a 75 degree and 15 I guess it has one that's kind of special 75 uh, 15 75 90 has a root 3 minus 1 root 3 plus 1 2 root 2 ratio relationship maybe I spoke too soon I didn't know that now I do I don't know what they mean by describe the triangles though I have a 45 45 90 in the middle I have two 30 60 90s in one of those I think I'm good I'm, I'm gonna leave it I described them with the markings inside the drawings all right a few more problems number 23 describe two ways to show that all isosceles right triangles are similar to each other okay so one way I'm just gonna say one way is by angle angle one way is really angle 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 by angle angle similarity da, da, da. Um, the two non right angles will always be 45 degrees so remember these are these are things that we learned not that was the wrong symbol um, you know things we learned in chapter eight on similarity so angle angle would be one another way is so and you can use all of them but side side angle side uh because isosceles triangles have two equal sides they will share a one-to-one -one similarity ratio with each other and the right angle is between them and congruent to all other right angles so when I say one-to-one -one, I don't mean from one triangle to the another uh, to, to the to the other I mean if this is five that's five in a single triangle and so this is gonna like ten and ten they both share the one-to-one -one. even though you go five to ten five to ten they would both work either way you can do side 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 if you really talk about the root two but I think we're going too deep into that okay two more problems making an argument each triangle in the diagram is a 45 45 90 triangle at stage zero the legs of the triangle are one unit long your brother which I do not have claims the lengths of the legs of the triangles added are halved at each stage so now this is with that one I got some of those the the lengths of the legs of the triangles added are halved at each okay the length of a leg of a triangle added in stage eight will be one over 256 to the unit's brother. oh okay so is your brother correct um no they're they're not half the size they're root two times smaller so i got to figure out what your brother you know how much my brother is going to be wrong by maybe but you know these are ones these become one over root two not one half so one over root two you could also say root two over two if we work in that in that domain so instead of one over 256 I'm guessing it's going to be more of one over root 256 now where do they get 256 from they were doing you know the eighth triangle there so if they said you know eighth uh, stage eight 1 over 2 to the 8th power is what's happening there. So they're saying, is this the case? No. No. It's going to be instead stage 8, 
1 over root 2 to the 8th power, which is 1 over root 256. The square root of 256 is 16. That is what each leg length will be in the right triangle set. Anyway, I, I'm not really going to explain that, but it's just you divide these by root 2, and instead of rationalizing it, just kind of keep it down there because eventually it rationalizes itself by stage 8. That's pretty cool. All right, I got one more question, and I got 9 minutes and 45 seconds to be able to crack down. I may, I may not. Who knows? I don't know how long the problem is, but I'd like to get one done in an hour. Number 25, using structure. Triangle TUV is a 30-60-90 triangle where two vert... Oh, graphs. Um, I have graph paper right here. I'll provide graph paper for you. For those who are assigned this problem or are daring to try it. I don't know if it's easy or hard. 30, 60, 90 triangle where two vertices are this and that. This is the hypotenuse and this is the quadrant one. Okay. So U is at 3, negative 1. V is at negative 3, negative 1. So we got U and V. UV is the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90. Point T is in quadrant 1. Find the coordinates of T. So if this is the hypotenuse, this is the hypotenuse, keep in mind the right angle is still not seen. To be in quadrant 1, the rest of it needs to be above. You have not an option because this is wrong. Either your 30, 60, 90 triangle could look like that, which it can't, or it can look like the other way like this, which it needs to. See, the idea here is it's not isosceles like those other triangles. It bends in one form and kind of goes the other. I don't know the exact answer. I'm just kind of drawing something. Maybe it's around one comma two. But this would be like the 60 and this would be the 30. Okay. So what we need to do is come up with, well, what do we need to do? We need to one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to understand this length being six, that this will be half of that, which is three but it needs to have a 60 degree angle coming off of it there. And this is three root three, by the way. But how are those distances used with angles for us to be able to find those? That I don't really know. You know, how do I use a 60 degree angle to find out how the coordinate goes? I know there's a right angle thing. Maybe I can use the lengths and say when those lengths are there where they intersect at opposite reciprocal slopes. I, I think I'm overthinking that part of the problem. Um, find the coordinates of t. That's six. That's three. Maybe I do have to do an opposite reciprocal slopes thing. Let me think about that. I have. I have a line. That's going there. And a line that's going there, and I need those specific lengths to hit. And that's some x11. Okay, here, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. I have some random unknown point. Let's call it x, y. We know these points. This is 3, negative 1. I don't know why I had to look down there. I have it on the graph. And this is negative 3, negative 1. Using, and this time I'm actually going to use a little more distance formula. Using the distance formula, they call this t, t. Uh, I can say that the length of TV, TV is the square root of x2 minus x, so x minus negative 3, so plus 3 quantity squared, plus y minus negative 1, or plus 1 squared, and eventually get 3 root 3. So I have an equation. I have an equation right here that I can use in a system. I'm going to use that one. This I think this should work. I have a second one. I Clearly, this is what they need us to do, something because we don't know how to use degrees for things unless they're 90. Um, now I have another one, x minus 3 squared. Let's write that. T u's length is the square root of x minus 3 quantity squared plus the y plus 1 quantity squared. But this length is 3. So I have this length here as well. I have a system of equations where both of these things are here. Now in each of these, you want to square both sides. I don't know if this is something you would have clearly known what to do. But I have x plus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared equals and 3 root 3 quantity squared. That, so that's what I'm doing. I'm squaring both sides. That's why the radical is gone. 3 squared is 9. Root 3 squared is 3. And 9 times 3 is 27. 
And on this one, when I square both sides, I get x minus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared equals, and here we square that and we get 9. Now, in a system of equations, you can interact things together. I'm very blessed with the fact these are both y plus 1 squared. So when I subtract these two sets of equations, these will cancel and go away. I don't know if this is the way to do the problem, but it's how I'm going to do it. And I have x plus 3 quantity squared minus x minus 3 quantity squared equals 9, 27 minus 9 is 18. Now I can solve for x because that's the only variable I have here, and then I can use it to solve for y after. Uh, expand it, I guess. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus x squared, well here's the thing in parentheses, minus 6x plus 9 equals 18. But x squared minus x squared, you know, okay, I'll distribute the negative. x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals 18. x squareds cancel, the 9s cancel, and you're left with 6x plus 6x, which is 12x. 12x is 18. Divide both sides by 12. You get x is 1.5. I was hoping for an integer, but instead I got that. All right, 1.5. Cool. Y is by plugging it in somewhere that will help me solve it. Uh, let's use that one up top. All right, so we can do, and I know I'm running out of room on my own little paper thingy. This is why I have that space here. So I'll have uh, <clears throat> 1 1.5 plus 3. Is there an easier way to find this? 1 plus squared plus, this is my system. Y plus 1 squared is 27. This is a longer problem for sure. Sorry for all the blank space. It's just going to look weird. So 4.5 squared plus, let's expand this, y squared, oh, I don't need to expand it. Uh, 4.5 squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared is 27. 4.5 squared, that's, uh, is that 20.25? Am I thinking of a different 4.5 times 4.5? 20.25, okay. So y plus 1 quantity squared equals 27 minus 20.25, don't know why I wrote it that way. y plus one quantity squared equals 6.75. So y plus one is, that'd be plus or minus. Is that, oh, the square root, the square root. Um, one plus or minus the square root of 6.75. I'm guessing only plus will apply because the quadrant that we're in. So let's just do plus. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative one. Hold on. I'm I'm one step ahead. I'm one step ahead of myself. Y is positive this, and then I subtract one from both sides, and I get y is negative one plus root six point seven. I don't know if this is right, which is about. I hope I didn't make a mistake somewhere. Negative one plus 6.75 square root. It's about 1.598, so I'll say 1.6. So 1.5 comma 1.6 is the answer, or the exact one is negative one plus root 6.75, which if you see, it, I guess it would be closer to like, I, that's probably not well drawn. I guess it would be closer to like right here. And you know what? Based on the 3069 triangles that we saw, that's probably very reasonable. So I'm going to believe it. Um, yeah, I'm going to believe that that one's it. Now the exact one again is negative one plus square root of 6.75, which again, you could probably rationalize, uh, excuse me, you could probably write better because I had a 4.5 squared. I could probably get in fraction form, but I want to get this done within an hour. Let me pause that and write it out first for you. Okay, so coming back with me here, I turned 1.5 into three halves instead and did all the math work on a common denominator. You didn't have to rationalize this denominator, took the square root. Negative one, instead of plus root 6.75 is plus three root three over two, which can be rewritten as common denominator negative two plus three root three over two. So that's another version of, I guess, writing around the 1.6 number, if you want to put it there. And that's probably another version of the answer. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. Very cool to get one of these lecture things done in an hour's time. 
gear up for section 9.3 where we hit something along the lines of i don't really know it we'll see what happens when we get there thanks so much for the uh this one here for keeping it short check out the description section down below if you want to find anything else including graph paper take care i'll see you in the next one